brothers, it's Grand President Billy Madelon here. I am super excited to join you on what I hope will be a regular occurring thing. It's a podcast. I'm calling it Off Script on purpose because, uh, well, I'm off script a lot. And also because SIGEP has been off script for a number of years now. You know, we're just we're just challenging the status quo and doing a lot of new stuff. So, and it's, and it's not a mistake. It's not an accident. It's very much on purpose. So I just thought uh, this would be an opportunity for me to come to you on a regular basis and talk a little bit about what's going on in SIGEP land, what's going on in the fraternity behind the scenes, uh, where we're headed, uh, where we are now, where we're headed later, et cetera. And uh, you could hear it directly from me. So I'm excited to be doing that. I want to introduce you to Heather Kirk. Heather, is going to be joining us for all of our podcasts. She is our Director of Marketing and Communications. And Heather, I'm going to let you tell them just a little bit about you and how you found SIGEP or how we found you, and then we'll get started. Thanks, Billy. Um, I've been in the fraternity and sorority industry quite a long time and uh, have worked for my sorority, worked for, for different groups, and, and always respected what SIGEP was doing. Uh, as you said, we're a little bit disruptive and, and not afraid to upset the apple cart for a good reason. And so I um, had always respected that. And, and when Brian came looking for a chief communications officer, was excited to get that call. So I've been with SIGEP several years and excited to, to work with you on this. So what are we talking about today? Uh, what is our, our first topic for this, this new podcast we have going on, Billy? Well, I thought our first topic would be my favorite topic, which is growth recruitment. You know, it's uh, it's the lifeblood of the fraternity. It's it's where our relevance sort of gets um, gets measured, uh, really, uh, in 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 a lot of ways. And so, I know that there have been a lot of questions about how COVID has affected the fraternity and um, the abolish Greek life movement, and a lot of the other sort of headwinds that we've had in the last year or two. So, uh, so let's start with growth. That sounds good. You're exactly right. We uh, get asked a lot about, I would say the last year and a half, um, people always wonder, how did we fare in the pandemic? How did our chapters, are they surviving? Are they doing okay? How is recruitment? Are people still joining? Um, can you, I think a lot of people are interested in that. But how would you say the recruitment or the pandemic impacted recruitment? How do we fare? Well, I mean, it, it affected recruitment in every single way. I mean, you know, a lot of colleges and universities were closed um, and, and the ones that weren't had certainly curtailed any kind of recruitment efforts, for, formal recruitment ether, efforts or other kinds of things. And so uh, it was, a, it was a, a, a real shit show, pardon my French. I mean, it was, a, it was a mess. But here's an interesting fact. About half of all of our chapters recruited more members than they had in the past wow. during COVID. So I don't know how to make sense of that, um, except that uh, obviously they were having to use a lot of sort of what in SIG Epland is not novel, but in the fraternity world is novel. Things like the Balanced Man Scholarship, things like uh, year-round recruitment, you know, sort of getting uh, out of that the, that always joiners group that comes and 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 getting uh, creative in how they do it. So again, about half recruited more. Now in the overall, we we shrunk. Um, we we got smaller by about eight percent, which uh, is you know is never a good thing. Uh, but if you look at our peers by size, um, many of them were at like twenty five percent or more in losses uh, in how much smaller they got. So I guess if you're looking at it in 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 our competitive set, uh, shrinking by eight percent is not too bad. I I actually think that I was surprised that we that we did as well as we did. I was really proud of our undergraduate members for working as hard as they worked to make to make that happen. That perseverance, I think, is is special um, and learning how to recruit in, in ways that we know are good, like you said, the, the BMS and using it to build an even bigger pipeline of quality, quality men and men who are interested in, in leadership and scholarship. Um, I think there's a lot we can carry, carry through from the pandemic probably, um, no a, a bit of a silver lining. Yep. Uh, speaking of that, where do you think we go from here? How do we, uh, how do we grow from here, I should say? How do we continue to sort of broaden that pool? Well, I mean, you know, so 
we already know that only about 9% of students come to college wanting to be part of fraternities. That, that data has been available for some time. So if those are the waters that, that our chapters are fishing in, and then our peers are fishing in that same 9% are always joining, joining waters, I mean, the results are going to always be underwhelming. I mean, not just in terms of quantity, but I think ultimately in terms of quality, because you know, always joiners, you, you're never really sure exactly what it is they're looking for, but you can you can guess, I think, that they're looking for something that's pretty stereotypical or pretty typical. I'd actually like to think SIGEP is not typical. In mm -hmm. fact, I, I think we're kind of becoming a niche product. I'm not even sure that we're a mass production or mass appeal product anymore. You know, with the advent of um, the balanced man scholarship, with the the advent of dry uh, facilities, substance-free facilities, going to the balanced man program as our standard operating model and doing away with pledging. I mean, that all of that stuff is, I mean, individually, those things are disruptive and different than the fraternity world that we're in, but you add all of them together and clearly we are a different experience. And so bottom line is we've got to get out of rush and get out of that, uh, that, that, uh, standing on a street corner, you know, one week out of the year and waiting people to come to us and get into uh, something that looks a hell of a lot more like the real world, which is that we're we're recruiting talent 365 days out of the year. And um, and and we're going where the talent is. We're not waiting for the talent to come to us. I mean, that's that's how I operate in my business. I know that's how you operate in yours. And so and I actually think in in SIG app because we allow uh, men to become members immediately. So there's not really any vetting process, right? So if you're, if you're allowing someone to become a member of SIG app after only knowing them a week, which means you know pretty much zero about them, uh, that's kind of dangerous. I mean, you're, you're, you, you're gonna learn a lot of things about who they really are. And by the time you do that, they're already a member of the fraternity. So if it were me, right, if I were an undergraduate, and I had my time, so I'm, I'm done. But if I were coaching or mentoring an undergraduate vice president of recruitment, I would be saying, get to know people really well before you offer them an opportunity to join the organization. And the way you do that is you identify them through existing networks. You begin to cultivate those relationships by getting to know them. You use uh, certain kinds of things to attract them to you, like the Balanced Man Scholarship, for example. You do the things that we know work uh, in, in helping to build relationships that are based upon uh, the values of Sigma Phi Epsilon, which is ultimately virtue, diligence, and brotherly love. Yeah, and you don't only wait for the people who are going to show up on your doorstep and, and rush. I think we do. You mentioned the always join our piece. Um, that's something that I think fascinates me about our brotherhood assessment survey. We look at why people join, what their motivation for becoming a fraternity man, specifically a, a SIG EP is. And the people who join through Rush are, are really more motivated by that um, traditional social environment. Whereas those who we get through the Balanced Man Scholarship or through year-round recruitment or even the timing um, different are, are more focused on what is what can SIGEV do for me from a leadership perspective or a networking perspective or how can I contribute to something larger than myself. They have a different, oftentimes, not always, right, a different t type of motivation that, um, that can really get at the heart of what are we here for? Um, what does virtue, diligence, and brotherly love mean to us? What does it mean to be a, a brother of something larger than oneself? Um, right. And the social piece is good too, right? Uh, I went well, they're to not mutually. Here. They're not mutually yeah. exclusive. You know, I hear people talk about it like, yeah. well, we can't have both. You, you know, we're either gonna we're yeah. either gonna party hard and have a lot of fun in college, or we're gonna be about leadership and this, that, and the other. And you, but you can't have both. Who said that? Who's who? That's a stupid rule. Who made that rule? <laughs> I agree. So, no, I, I think that's that's ridiculous. OK, so, Billy, what would you say to an undergraduate chapter who is looking to tap more into the, that 91 percent? So you mentioned the 9 percent who are always joiners who typically go through Rush. How do they broaden their pool? What would you suggest? Well, I, I use the tools you already have in your toolbox. I think the Balanced Man Scholarship Program is great. Uh, I would recruit through existing members. Obviously, you, you know, having all of your members 
talk to you about who, who the young men that are coming to school from their high school, they already know who those folks are, they know their families, they can testify and talk to them a little bit about uh, you know, about who they are as people that makes the, the, the vetting process easier. Um, I would, I would, I say, I'd, I'd say you, you definitely want to take advantage of the fact that if, if your college or university doesn't limit the amount of time that you can invest in recruitment, you should be doing that 365 days out of the year. And, and what are you going to get? You're going to get the maybes instead of the always joiners. You're going to get the maybe joiners. And those people we know are not going to uh, have a stereotypical fraternity experience in mind. You know, they're going to probably, and, and the other benefit is if we really think diversity is important in our fraternity, uh, we, we really have to do that because there's no way in the world that, that, Folks who opt into Rush and go through Rush, uh, we know from years and years of experience that they don't look like the broad cross section of the okay. campus is where we are. You know, they're, 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 you don't have African Americans and Hispanics and first generation college students, et cetera, uh, go through Rush. You just don't. And if you believe that they add value to our experience, which I 100% do, uh, you've got to recruit. Um, off off of that calendar. You've got to go to where they are and reach out to them because they sure as hell aren't going to show up uh, and opt into an experience that they know very little about mm -hmm. and what little they do know might be stereotypically inaccurate. Yeah, I think uh, inclusions, uh, we've got a whole episode we need to do on that probably. I agree with that, yeah. But I, I do think you mentioned first generation students. I think that's such a great example. These are students whose parents, um, they're the first people in their, in, their, in their family to go to college. They don't know that on some campuses you need to sign up for Rush a week early. They don't know that you have to pay to essentially even go through a process. They don't even know a process exists. That's right. They just want to join something where they can find a mentor, where they can find connection. Um, and SIGEP offers that in, in so many different ways. And, and we are going to miss out on that group. And let's be clear about how big that group is. 30 to 40 percent of every college campus is made up of first generation college students. Right. Um, and we're missing out because they're they are less likely to uh, show up on our doors at Rush. So I well, love and, that. And because what's counted counts, right? Math matters. Actually, men make up a smaller percentage of the of the overall college population now than ever before. Yeah. Only about forty percent of all college students are male now, mm -hmm. and so uh, our, our, the, the the pool that we're recruiting from, if you take forty percent and then you start segmenting that down and realize that a higher and higher percentage are Hispanic, African American, first gen college students, all of whom we have historically not done a terrific job recruiting and. And, uh, and being a part of, you know, if we don't change the way that we're recruiting, we're in trouble. You know, we're in trouble. And I wouldn't do it because I'm afraid of, of, of failure. I'd do it because there's so much to be gained from it. The richness of your experience is going to be so super awesome because your fraternity brothers look like the world where we live and they don't look exactly like you. I think that's a great way to look at why diversity matters. I love that. Speaking of uh, speaking of how things look and, and where we're at, what are you mentioned at the top um, why we're doing this and a piece of that is to provide updates about what's going on in SIGEP land. So how are we doing so far? Um, let's first talk expansion. Where are we starting or restarting, I should say, this fall? And, and what's in the plan for expansion long term? I know it's a big, big picture item on your strategic plan. Uh, what's what's in store? Yeah. So just looking back a little bit, just a few years ago, Sigma Phi Epsilon was at around 250 chapters. Today, we're a little south of 200. Yeah. So we've we've gone on a diet. Um, <laughs> it was um, a, a, candidly a self-imposed diet. So when I say niche product, I think that's part of it, right? So we, we but, but not elite and not exclusive, just in terms of who we are attractive to and who we're interested in attracting has changed, right? So, but we want to get bigger. We want to go to campuses where they will support and partner with us for a fraternity experience 
as we define it, right? Which is gonna be different than probably anything else that's going on on their, on their campus. So we're gonna be highly selective about that, but growth generally means three things, right? So one is expansion. Expansion in SIGEP land means where we're gonna go, what campuses we're going to, to start uh, to, or restart in most cases, SIGEP chapters. The other one is in recruiting more of the very best men on the campuses where we are. So that would be same store sales, if you will, in business parlance. And then the third is retention. Mm -hmm. Retention is a growth strategy, right? Making sure that yeah. we don't have a, a back door where all our juniors and seniors are walking out because the fraternity experience isn't relevant to them at that point in their life. So uh, I, the Balanced Man program is done a whole lot about helping us with retention, of course, the Balanced Men Scholarship and 365 are really helping us with same store sales, getting more of the best men on our campuses. And then, of course, there's the issue of expansion, expansion, going to new universities. So this year, this academic year, we're going to be going to a number of new campuses. We're going to uh, start out by going to Case Western in Ohio, uh, Cal Poly, um, uh, San Luis Obispo, uh, San Diego State University, and then we're gonna to go to Dartmouth and Rutgers. So these are terrific campuses. They're campuses that want us there. They're excited about us coming there. They believe their campus needs us and they're places where we wanna be. So we're super excited to be going back to those places. And then looking forward, we're, we're, we're really gonna be on, an, on a sort of a, a, a pretty consistent expansion growth uh, pattern where we're probably going to be growing by four or five chapters uh, at least every single year for the foreseeable future. And our expectation is that we won't have to be closing as many chapters because the chapters that we now have are far more values aligned than they've ever been before. Yeah, that intentional diet you're talking about. That's Make right. Sure that we're all on the same page. That's right. Okay. And I should say we're getting ready to have our 350,000th SIGEP initiated, which is a little mind boggling, but 350,000 men have, uh, will soon have been initiated into SIGEP. So that's pretty special. That is very cool. I wonder who it'll be. We'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> well, we will have to see, but you know, our camp, our chapters are about 25% year over year. So we're, we're 25% ahead of mm -hmm. last year. More importantly, Heather, we're, we're even ahead of 2019. Okay. So if you want to get excited about growth, our chapters are are actually recruiting better than they were pre-COVID. So I think it's fair to say what we're doing is starting to work. I think that's good to hear. And I hope that uh, I hope that everyone listening is excited by that and motivated by it. Um, you know, we have uh, a lot of chapters who are still facing headwinds, still facing restrictions from their schools um, that, that weren't ready to to open the doors to in-person things this fall uh, for reasons. And so I think um, hopefully we can see, it is good to hear that we're pacing ahead and hopefully we can see some of those headwinds dissipate. And and like you said, uh, our, our chapters really are resilient and, and use all of these tools uh, to, to get more men in their pipeline. That's so right. So pacing ahead, five new chapters this year, about to three, hit 350,000. We are uh, cruising. So that's excited to hear. But before we close, um, I think something we had talked about doing uh, in each one of the shows is sharing an example or sharing a story or sharing, um, you know, good feels and good vibes about of what's going on uh, in SIGEP land and, and a big win for people to learn from and, and get excited about. Do we have one of those on the growth front today? Well, we've got lots. You know, SIG, SIGEP is uh, an organization where there's always some really great stuff going on. I call it a damn proud moment, you know, and I, I'm damn proud to be a SIGEP all the time. But there's sometimes things happen and I just say, that really makes me proud. So today I'd like to share with you a little story about uh, a, a chapter, Cal Theta at Sacramento State. You know, back in the fall of 2019, uh, our chapter was, uh, had, had one member, okay? And um, uh, we, we were uh, obviously struggling. And the chapter worked really, really hard and really, really hard and really, really hard. And then by uh, the spring of 2020, they had four whole members. So they were not exactly killing it, right? 
And so the alumni of the chapter, recognizing that we sort of were at a, a pivot point, you know, we were at a fork in the road, we were either going to figure out how to get it done, or we were going to, we were probably going to not survive there, reached out to headquarters and, and, and used our networks and said, you know, is there a way for us to bring someone in to coach and mentor the chapter and help them, help them with recruitment and help them grow? And so uh, the answer is yes. So inner stage left, Kevin Quoka, who's a Cal Delta alum. Uh, Kevin is a past staffer and he's a director of talent acquisition for a, a successful, successful software company in California. So anyway, Kevin gets involved and he works really help. He works really hard with them, gets them excited about it. And they're up there from four to eight members in basically uh, the first week. So obviously something was happening, right? Uh, and then by the end of the spring, uh, which is when, for you know, thinking back, COVID set in, uh, he'd helped the chapter adopt, uh, the, adapt their recruitment to a virtual recruitment model. Um, and yet again, they doubled from eight to 16, which, you know, again, doesn't sound like a lot, but it, 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 it's double, right? It's double. And so um, with the year-round recruitment model that they have, and, and they use the Balanced Man Scholarship year-round now, which is another interesting yeah. thing, because I think a lot of our chapters think about the Balanced Man Scholarship sort of like we think about Christmas, you know, that it's only a special occasion kind of thing. Well, they keep the Christmas tree up all year long, right? The Balanced Man Scholarship is something that they use on a consistent basis. So, um their, their, their vice president of recruitment, Mateo, uh, and their BMS chair and their recruitment committee, they're all working together, working really hard, doing year-round recruitment. And because Kevin and the alumni and Mateo and all those guys, they're, they're, they're over 30 members today, which is eight times larger yeah. than they were in 2019. And more importantly, there's a SIGEP experience that's alive and well on that campus when it could have just as easily died, died on the vine. So a special shout out to um, to uh, the the our original one SIGEP, uh, who, who's De Niro Gomez, uh, who had the perseverance uh, and the fortitude, you know, to stick it out uh, in the early days when it was looking kind of dark. Uh, and then uh, also, again, Kevin, Mateo, De Niro, just winners and make me damn proud to be a SIGEP. I love it when people just get it done and uh, they grab shovels, they started digging and today they're drinking the water. I really, really like it. That is awesome. And I actually just heard this week, I think De Niro's even running for IFC office. So awesome. hopefully we'll lead from the front in that community. So that well, is- Well, if they're looking cool. for somebody that produces results, I would say De Niro might just be a guy they wanna, they wanna figure out how to get on board. Oh, good to hear. Well, I think we are good on growth. Any final thoughts for our undergraduates or volunteers out there? Well, I'd say, listen, COVID is uh, clearing uh, and we, we got better. We got smarter, we survived and we got stronger. And I think on the other side of uh, COVID brothers, we, we are at the precipice of some really special stuff. You're part of a, of a fraternity movement called Sigma Phi Epsilon at a very interesting time. And I think the next few years for SIGEP are going to be dynamic and they're going to be full of growth, but we're also going to be going to some places uh, sort of like Captain Kirk where no man has gone before. No fraternity man has gone before. So I'm really excited to be able to be a part of that and help lead that as your grand president for the next few years. And I look forward to the opportunity to coming uh, before you a couple of times a month and, and doing this again. And let's, let's talk about SIGEP land and uh, let's get off script on purpose.